So this is from uh, London Crimes, which is a box set of the first three books in the National Moretti series by myself. So I'll read from the prologue of Latent Damage. Jared Hussein's life was about to end. He took a glance at the cards he'd been cradling for the last five minutes. The fan selection he hoped would bring him success after a day's accounting for the North London Mosque, where he was a trustee and figures man. The accounts were in order and healthy, which was more than he could say for his current hand. I'm out, he announced as he lay down his cards and waited for the victor to show theirs. It had been a good night despite his loss, and he felt no resentment at handing over the money's owed. He collected his coat, putting it on over his thorb, and added a woolen beanie in preparation for his exit from the terraced house where he had been enjoying the company of friends. He bid the three remaining players good night as he climbed the basement stairs to the house's main door. He patted his coat pocket and reassured himself he had his house keys. He didn't want to wake his wife and child. Satisfied he had everything he'd come with, aside from £300 cash, he exited the house. The December air greeted him like a cool slap as he ducked into his coat and made towards his own abode. His place was three doors down from the mosque. As he walked, he checked his watch and decided he needed to pray. He enjoyed the mosque, the camaraderie, his faith and Allah. All meant the world to him. He knew his gambling wasn't in accordance with his beliefs and was sure to not use any monies gained by this activity, activity as zakat. This assuaged his troubled mind, as did the prayer he now absorbed himself, absorbed himself in. On completion of the words, he left the mosque after embracing the imam and whispering he would see him later. The imam smiled warmly, saying, Inshallah. Hussein stepped out the door and turned right, and as he got to the front of the mosque, the bracing night air rushed to his thorb and reminded him he'd forgotten his coat. He turned to walk back, and as he did, he looked up to the minaret. He heard muffled footsteps, but was too slow to turn. His body jolted as his forehead was grabbed from behind by a gloved hand and jerked back to expose his throat. A knee dug into his thigh and held him against the railings of the mosque. He froze as he felt the pressure of a sharp edge against his throat, in con contrast with the warm breath of his assailant that flicked across a tiny bold patch at the top of his skull, as though his hunter was scenting its prey. His arms were incapacitated in a single armed bear hug. Robbed of speech through fear, he let out a final sigh as the surgically sharp blade was drawn with purpose across his neck, severing his jugular. The legs that had supported him for 50 years collapsed as he crashed to the pavement. As he lay there, he felt a gloved hand pat his chest, and as his vision blurred, he saw a pair of trainers as they reflected in a pool of blood before they disappeared from sight. So here I am today with Ian Patrick, Ian Robinson, to talk about his writing. Um, he is a local crime author, who uh, originally worked for the Met Police. And um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your writing? Yeah, sure. So um, I left the police in 2015 and uh, after 27 years in the Met. Mm -hmm. And um, due to ill health, really, I have a muscular dystrophy which affects my legs mainly. Yeah. So I kind of thought, well, I'm going to be sat down a lot more. Yeah. What could I do? And it really did just start like that. Yeah, yeah. So I'd written a book, um, a kind of take on, on the on the commitments, you know, the film The Commitments? Oh, yes. like, a bit like that, yeah. set in the 80s. And that was 90,000 words. And uh, I'd given that to a friend of mine who was a published author to get her opinion on it. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, she was brutally honest. <laughs> yeah, and she was, no, she was absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely it was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. So I had a sulk for like a day, yeah. and then there was a competition um, that came out with No Exit Press, mm -hmm. and they were looking for uh, a short story, and the winner of that would get a publishing contract. Wow, thanks. So I thought, well, there is that old phrase, write what you know, mm -hmm. which I don't necessarily agree with. Yeah. But at that time, that's what I did. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'll write about a crime. Yeah. And I'll choose a protagonist who is totally the opposite to me. Yeah. And that's how Rubicon was born, which was my debut. Uh -huh. And I got down to the final three, mm. which I was quite surprised at. Yeah. And I didn't get the publishing contract. But mm -hmm. that short story is based on the first three chapters of Rubicon. And then it, I went on mm. from there. Because it was judged by yeah, yeah. it was judged by other authors, yeah. so I thought, well, I seem to have an ability to write, mm -hmm. so I'll just carry on. Yeah, yeah. And that's really how my writing journey 
oh, started. That's, that's really fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, he's quite a character about first. He, he is. is. No, he is. And um, I mean, the reason I chose to write him as he is, is because if I was to kind of uh, base it on myself, it would be very dull. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, it's true. Aww. It's true. In terms of like fiction, in terms of pace, in terms of all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it was, and it was, it was, a, you know, it was challenging enough to write the book, yeah. uh, but it was also, uh, uh, it added that extra dimension onto it. Yeah. And so the character came to life a little bit more. Yeah. And um, I enjoyed, yeah, definitely enjoyed writing that series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I find the movie quite fascinating. Um, it kind of, in some ways, it's a little bit like Irvin Welsh in that grittiness. You, you're writing, you're writing about really dark characters with a lot of um, moral greyness, um, which I quite find fascinating. Anyway, we were talking about George R. R. Martin just before we started, yeah. and that's the same kind of thing. In that way, it's the characters we go on interesting journeys and you know they don't start off like perfect and nice and, you know they're, 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 no yeah, they've got baggage yes definitely so but he has his own set of morals mm. yes so although they are skewed yes. let's say they you know uh, i found the feedback from people who've read them mm -hmm. is that they don't necessarily they don't hate him yes which is you know astonishing for some of the stuff he does yeah uh, yeah, but equally, true. it's quite encouraging because you just think, well, you know, uh, um, it, yeah, it was good to hear that. Mm, yeah. Because it's not meant to be unlikable. No, it's not unlikable. No. Definitely not. No. But you, you definitely sense um, it's almost, I mean, it's a sort of maverick character as yeah. well, obviously, yeah. you know, a bit off the wall, yeah. does things his own way. Yeah. And, and that's quite interesting. Totally, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yes. Um, gets himself into some fairly sticky situations, which he then works his way out of which is making quite some Yeah, and that was um that was quite uh in, well, it's very encouraging for me because I don't plan my books. Oh. So I have no idea where they're gonna go. Oh. So normally I have a I am I know a start. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how it's gonna progress from that. Mm -hmm. So that that character kind of was getting into those situations in my head mm -hmm. and I was having to work out, well the character's there now. Yeah. How do I get him out of this? Uh -huh. That's plausible. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that the reader would think, oh, I wasn't expecting that, but actually that would work. Mm. Not kind of, well, that would never work. Yeah. yeah. You know, because although it's fiction, you have to have a degree. Yeah, of, yeah, absolutely. It's got to um, be respect the reader. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Not, not, te not teach too much of a sort of liberty with what, would be, what is believable for. Yeah, people. especially in crime fiction. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. People, it's interesting because um, what I find is there's an awful lot of the Older readers are very keen on crime fiction, and um, so they, you know, they're, they're the readers who've been reading for a long time, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they know books, mm -hmm. and you can't really fool them, and they're looking for something with a bit of, I don't know, a bit of a, um, a bit of a mystery to it, or a bit of, yeah. a bit of something to pull them along, and they, they're quite interested in the sort of procedural side of these things as well. Yeah, and you know, with the advent of um, uh, television and mm -hmm. like reality crime programs yes. you know the, the knowledge of uh that area has has gone up tenfold mm -hmm. even if you're not in the piece yes so yes. you have to respect that yes. but equally you need to be putting in procedure as to the story there's no mm -hmm. point putting in procedure for the sake of yeah that's it. It. yeah oh absolutely no, yeah. If you, if you which i've learned going along yeah you know mm -hmm. i was might, might have been a bit procedurally heavy in certain areas not necessarily in the batford series but in my latest series uh, with the book folks, mm -hmm. Nash and Moretti. That's yes. more. That's two individuals on a murder team. Mm. So that was they were challenging to write in their yes. own way yeah. because you have to keep the pace of the stories flowing without getting it bogged down in mm. in what they would be doing. Because yes. otherwise, again, it makes it very dull. Yes, yes, and that's that's the thing, I suppose, as well. When in a lot of in a lot of literature, um, the main point of the story is the character. Mm. Obviously, in crime, the main point of the story is the crime and the character. Although the characters have to be believable and they have to have depth, it's really kind of they're they're being pulled along through the story by finding out how the how the crime has happened and you know. Yes. There's 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 rules to. It. Yeah, there are. I mean, yeah, there are rules. Um, certainly, I mean, look at screenwriting. Mm -hmm. There are only so many story tropes you can tell. Mm -hmm. 
10 or 11, I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, but you've got to fit your unique world into one of those tropes, be it thriller, crime, mm -hmm. romance, yeah. horror. There'll be certain expectations of what yes, exactly. has to be in those yes. cinematically. Mm -hmm. And equally in, in crime fiction, I kind of think it's a similar approach. Mm -hmm. The reader will be expecting mm -hmm. uh, certain things to happen. Yes. Like, uh, I don't know, if there's a murder, mm -hmm they'll be expecting a resolution mm -hmm. to that yeah. at the end. Yes. If it's open, uh -huh. well, that's going to be very disappointing. And very unsatisfying. Yeah. Yes, because that's, the, that, that's what they're in it for from, from the start. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, actually, speaking of Ashley Marathi, I haven't actually read any of them. That's my big confession. But um, what, one of the things that I have been impressed with with your writing is your female characters. Um, I find them very, not just compelling, but I find that they're well fleshed out and very believable, which isn't something that all male writers do. So yeah. Oh, that's lovely that, to hear. Yes. That's lovely to hear. I mean, I do my best. Is it? Is you know, I do my best, and I I try to mm -hmm. um, give each. You know, I try to give my characters depth. Yes. Male or female. Yes. Um. So that's very encouraging to hear that. Mm. No, I, I was it, definitely yeah. impressed by, good. by that. Um, yeah. Good. Your wife is your main, your first reader. Is she, she is my yes. first reader. Does she, yeah. does she give you feedback on that? She can do. Yeah. Yeah. No, she does. No, mm -hmm. she does. Absolutely, she does. And um, certainly in uh, the Batford series, mm -hmm. you know, that I had to tame down a lot of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Rightfully so. Mm -hmm. Rightfully so, because yeah. it wasn't it wasn't adding to the story, mm -hmm. and um, it it wasn't good for the characters. Mm -hmm. You yes, know? yes. So um, some stayed in. Yes. But I hope that what did stay in is, mm. is character driven. Mm. Yes. That, that's the thing. Yes. Because it's not necessarily my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's that character's. It's yes. adding to that character's yes. uh, voice. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, and actually, when I read when. Uh, when the wire week? How the wire week? How yeah. the wire week? Yeah. Sorry. No, um, no, no. I read, I, I read that last year, and again, I was quite impressed with the the sort of your, your subplot, um, the main character and his wife, you know, trying try, trying to have a baby, and 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 how all that actually ended up working into the, yes. the, the, the final sort of punch at the end, which actually. I, I burst out in tears, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did, I burst out in tears. I wasn't, okay. I wasn't really expecting it to be quite so, yeah, yeah I not mean, quite I, such a punch in the end, but it, it was good, you know. Oh, that's lovely to hear. No, that is genuinely lovely to hear, because mm -hmm. that is one of, I mean, I self-published that book. Ah. Um, and the main it? reason that I did that was mm -hmm. because that was kind of quite, a, I mean, they say that, you know, you talk about book babies or whatever you mm -hmm. like, but I mean, that was one that I felt quite, strongly about that book. Yes. So I wanted to have full control of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Cover art, yeah. what, what went on in you know yeah. how it was produced. Yeah. And I've got um, book. Yeah, it's beautiful. That mm -hmm. is done by um, Mark Swan, mm -hmm. Kid Ethic he's called and he does the cover art for Arenda Publishing. Mm -hmm. Um and he's very, very good. Mm -hmm. Very, very yeah. good. Like he, he I gave him the concept of it mm -hmm. and he produced yeah, a, a stunning cover. Yeah, really, really, cover. really mm -hmm. stunning cover. Mm -hmm. And it just it, it it fits the book mm -hmm. brilliantly it does. and um yeah that's what i loved about that book because mm -hmm. it's not about it, it explores a different side of crime mm -hmm. um a different side of uh, a department in the police mm -hmm. but equally i don't really see it as a crime story it's mm -hmm. it, it yes. is a there's 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 an underlying theme to that book yes that is not crime mm -hmm. there's a very very it's, human element yes, absolutely it. and that's, i enjoy and i think from that writing that book mm -hmm. uh, that Kind of branched off in different directions and mm -hmm. subsequent to that. Yes. Um, Nash and Moretti, again, that, that's exploring uh, D.I. Pippa Nash and mm -hmm. her DS Nick Moretti. Moretti's a bit of a maverick, mm -hmm. whereas Nash is more kind of by the book, mm -hmm. but equally she's an undercover officer, mm -hmm. you know, so she's mm -hmm. able to get stuck in, mm -hmm. in different mm -hmm. areas that yeah, others yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. And um, that, they were enjoyable characters to write, and I'm halfway through the Fourth book in that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Ah, excellent. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. So now when I was looking back and doing my little bit of research on the on the website, and I was I was looking um, 
about how, you know, when you joined the police and um, you were you just went pretty much straight from school into joining yeah. the police. Yeah, so I left school at 16 and I could do that a national exam then mm-hmm. and I qualified to join any well, it was a force then mm-hmm. in the country. Yeah. So I chose London. Yeah. Because um, they were they had a massive mm-hmm. recruitment yeah. thing on at the time. Yeah. It was nineteen ninety. Big big push for officers. Yeah. I didn't have to wait. Yeah. So um, uh, and you know it was absolutely the right decision. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, looking back. Yeah. Uh, definitely so. Because I was working in a civil service um, in, from sixteen till nineteen. Yeah. Uh, paying benefits. In yeah. Nottingham. Uh, so yeah, yeah, and uh, so I had a pretty full career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you did quite a lot. But it's just quite interesting, you know, because obviously, um, a lot of people do sort of think, well, I can't write because I haven't done X amount of school, X amount of university, that kind yeah. of thing. So, so being able to just, you know, go from having been in the net to deciding that that's what what you're going to do. Um, I suppose in some ways people would say that you might start off at a disadvantage of that, but obviously not. Well, no, because in, in the end you've got nothing to lose, and 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 ultimately the battle is with your own mind. Mm. You know, uh, I don't believe mm-hmm. everybody has a book in them. Yeah, I don't believe that at all. No. Because no. Uh, you know, it's one thing to think of an idea for a book; mm-hmm. it's another thing to get your butt in a chair yeah. and write one. Mm-hmm. And then write another mm-hmm. and another mm-hmm. and another. Mm-hmm. It, it, um, that they can be quite emotionally draining to write. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, once you've actually written the first draft, you you've basically got the flesh of a story. Then mm-hmm. you've got to you've got to edit and edit yeah. and edit and edit yeah. and edit. And yeah. you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Mm-hmm. So, um, but even if you get to the stage where you end up writing, you you end up with a first draft of a book. Mm-hmm. That is huge. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, I think it's, I think I read a statistic, something like there's less than 1% of the population that is published. I'm not, I'm not talking about across the world. Mm. You know, I could be wrong now. Mm. Which no, I don't think. But I mean, that's, yeah, um, yeah, that's I think that's what it was. Yes. So, in all, so it's, um, it's a privileged position to be in. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And it's yeah. a privileged position to be in when you can have readers' feedback that they've enjoyed your story because mm-hmm. you're asking a reader to spend their precious time with mm-hmm. your book yes so it has to be the best you can produce it can't yeah. be mm-hmm. uh crap yeah. it has to be the best yeah. you can produce yeah. and, and that's the, that's the thing for me once a book goes out there i know that i can't do any more mm-hmm. within my capability yes. at this point in my career mm-hmm. um because i'm just starting out yeah i mean i've been writing six years now mm-hmm. i've done nine books four are published um and i've got two on submission Mm -hmm. so you you do learn and you evolve and you develop Mm -hmm. yeah 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 life is a learning experience anyway yes Um, it is yes it is yeah yeah Yeah, and your writing uh develops when you work with different editors Mm -hmm. you know there's um there's that as well yes yeah that's something which i have of, no, I mean, I've never actually done it. The last person who edited my work was my English teacher. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a process that fascinates me. When you take a baby and you hand it over to someone, what, what is that like? How does it feel when you do that? Well, I mean, so the last... Edit, so I've worked with editors at the book folks, mm-hmm. and they are excellent. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have picked up on stuff um, that... I hadn't realised, mm-hmm. you know, so they've been very good factual stuff. Yes. yes. Um, so, uh, and uh, and also I worked with a, a lady called Sarah Cox, mm-hmm. who, um, she edited a book of mine called Driftwood, mm-hmm. that's, um, yeah, and that's set on the southwest coast of Scotland, that's not crime, mm-hmm. that's, I call it literary fiction, yes. but I learned an awful lot by doing that book with her. Yes. I mean, that was like, um, that was... An emotional roller coaster mm. editing that book mm. because she was saying to me, Look, you need to like, go on the body, called going on the body with the character. Mm-hmm. So rather than just say, X feels sad, mm-hmm. express that emotion, yes. bring it out that way. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Chuck Hornick talks a lot about that mm-hmm. going on the body, 
mm-hmm. rather than just saying yeah. it. Same. You know, um, because we all know we all experience these emotions, and hopefully, as you're reading, you'll 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 be conjuring up what that emotion is. Mm-hmm. So you're more of a immersive experience with the book. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, it's, um, I'm so you can learn an awful lot. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I've never really, um, I've not clashed with an editor. Well, that's a, that's the, a key the, the main reason is because yeah. they're there to get the best out of that story. Mm-hmm. And yes. if you're going from that angle, mm-hmm. you know, as hard as it is to keep making cuts, keep putting additions in, mm-hmm. doing all that, mm-hmm. they're, they're saying it for all the right reasons. They're yes. not saying it just to be pedantic, because otherwise, yeah. you know, they've got plenty to get on with. Mm. <laughs> yeah, And you can be so precious about these things, yes. but ultimately it's like, do you, do you really need to be precious about that sentence? Ultimately, in the whole greater scheme of things, it may be lovely, just take it out and put it in something different. Where it works. Who, who is it says, I think which, which author was it said, kill your darlings? Oh, I've heard this. Uh, there might um, have been George R. Martin. Might have been. It, might, well, it certainly would sound right. I was wondering whether it was Ashley McGlynn. That's She She was a really drastic, dra- she always did this very drastic cut. I actually try and, uh, try and do this every so often. And she would actually literally try and cut her word count in half after she'd mm. done her first draft. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's a challenge. I've done that on a few sort of short stories and things like that when I was um, doing my Open University Creative Writing course. Mm. That's what I did. Yeah. I've done a few things. And that is, it's difficult to sort of cut out. When you say, right, okay, so the word count is 3,000. I've got to get it down to 1,500. Let's go. And you end up taking out so much stuff. Yeah, but hopefully the story it becomes tighter as a mm. result and it's oh, easier it, to yes. read. Well, that's it. You're, you're doing it to serve the story, aren't you? Absolutely, because you don't want to be reading a book and you suddenly find, you know, obviously sometimes we can read, we're tired, we drift mm-hmm. off a bit. Yeah. But the idea is that you're, the, the flow is there and as mm-hmm. you're reading it, you're immersed in it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it. Until you get to a point where you, where you choose to stop, mm-hmm. not the story stops you reading. Because yes. then you're just like, well, did that need to be in it? Yes, that's it, exactly. Just because you've, you've mm-hmm. stopped the flow of it. Especially mm-hmm. in thrillers, crime fiction, mm-hmm. it needs to be paced. Yes, it does. It needs, um, to, it needs to pull you along. Yes, it do. does. Yes, it does. And they're not, um, yeah. And it, it's it, it's just something you you begin to learn through practice and mm-hmm. working with an editor. Mm-hmm. So then, when it comes to your first draft, you're not. I'm not putting stuff in that I would have done before uh-huh. because I know it's just I'll, it's going to get edited out. Mm-hmm. There's no point. It doesn't add to the story. It might be a bit funny. Yeah. It may have. Um, you can maybe fictionalize something that would happen in a team. Mm-hmm. But is it adding to the story? Yes yeah. or no? If it's no, just go with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it is. But that can be hard because you you can think, oh, that's brilliant. I've just got something really. Yeah. yeah, and it might add a different dimension. It might show how it might show how the team bonds, or yes. it might show things like that. You know, because mm-hmm. obviously there is that part of it. Mm-hmm. It's not so um, rigid. Mm. Um, but equally, you've got to you know respect the story, respect the reader. Mm. They're there to read. Yeah. Crime fiction is an expectation of what they're going to get. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not at a stage where I can, like, uh, uh, a Cormac McCarthy, mm-hmm. you know, who could just write mm-hmm. and it will be whatever's going to remain in there. Yes. You know, it's, it's going to be. Practice, because yeah. he's, he's Cormac McCarthy. That's it, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think it was Douglas Copeland that also said that. He said that he wished that his editors would edit me. Not stand, not be so hands off, mm, because nice. like it's, yeah. it's just that just because it's him doesn't mm-hmm. mean that he can't yeah. be anything. Well, yes, I mean, I, I know Tolkien was not very keen on the editing, but then what he he did with um, the Lord of the Rings was he literally he he, he, he would write it and get so far into the story and he'd go, that's not working, and he would literally go back to the very very start and wow. then wrote it again. I mean, he had he had the world built. Yes. I mean, that we spent so many yeah. years building the world. So when it actually yeah. came to writing the story, you know, he had all of those ideas, but he kept, he, I don't know how many times he went, he went back and did it again and again, but it was quite a lot of times because the gap between The Hobbit being published and The Lord of the Rings being published is really yeah. quite, quite huge. And imagine, I mean, I don't know whether he recorded elements of that world, mm. um, because imagine having to remember mm. that continuity-wise across yes. all those books. Yes. Because... Yes. That's the other thing. You yeah, need to make sure, certainly if you're setting up characters in a team, mm-hmm. that they all remain 
uh, the, their character arcs and everything mm-hmm. are consistent throughout yes. a series of books. Yes. If they suddenly change age, hair colour, eye colour, mm-hmm. readers going to pick up on that. Um, so that's often the first clue that you're reading the Might of Order is that that's you know, that's right. A so yeah, so you it's you know they they you know you could you could keep a character diary. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you've got those things down there. Yeah, that's so if you're if you suddenly find your mind is like oh I can't really remember and it is relevant mm-hmm. then you can go back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I tend to sort of oh my book I've not published but my I, I tend to keep screeds of documents with little bits and pieces and. This is what this character's like, or this is what that character's like, and this is who you know. This is the name of their boss. This is the name. Yeah, of, well, you know, all it. those kind of things. It like just that. helps your brain mm. at times, and it doesn't need to put any extra effort in mm. to think about those things. That, yeah, you know, when it's trying to concentrate on where the story is going next. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, what was I going to say? So, you you lived and worked in London. Yeah. And then you moved to the quiet quietness of, of the Galloway countryside, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm awfully fond of the Galloway countryside. So, I'm going to so am I. Yeah. 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 How, so how, 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 how has that? Um, oh, good word for what I'm trying to say. How's that impacted on you? Sort of you living living here after being. Uh, it was a very, huge adjustment. Yes. You know, and it still is. Mm-hmm. You know, the pace of life mm. is totally different. Yeah. You know, and um, not in a bad way. Yeah. But obviously, if you spent nearly thirty years in London policing, yes. You know, um, coming into a rural area uh, is going to have an impact on that. Yes. You know, you've got to slow down. Yes. Um, and that can be tough. Yes. Yeah, definitely tough. And switching off mm. from policing. Yes. That can be yeah. very tough. Is it because I suppose with policing, you you work in shift work, so you're not you're not working you know nine to five. So you, you, you switched on all different kinds of times. Yeah, I mean, yes. <coughs> I mean, certainly when I was investigating child murder and doing proactive paedophile work, uh, yes. we were on call for those things. Mm. Um, how, do, how do you stop your brain from running running on with these things when you're, when you're working in such hard core um, uh, aspects of crime? That's a very good question. And I don't really know the answer to that, yeah. to be fair. Don't know the answer to it. Yeah. I managed it Good. then, <laughs> yes. Um, but it's when you come out, of mm-hmm. course, that then you know th- some of these things can catch up with you. Yeah, so so you, you, you know, it's um, we've all got our own coping mechanisms mm-hmm. for our work and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, sometimes you're just running on adrenaline, mm-hmm. so therefore that's your coping. Yeah, and then when you're not running on, running on adrenaline anymore, well. Let's say you are still running mm-hmm. adrenaline, but you shouldn't be. Yes. That's when things begin to deteriorate. Right. Yes. Um, yes. So uh, it's very important to craft your mind. Mm. Yeah. Very important. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But often, you know, it's, it's it's giving yourself the time to do it and mm. recognizing that you need it. Yes. Yeah. Mm, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's quite a yeah must be quite an adjustment. But yes. No. Certainly yes. was. No. It certainly was. And in some ways, writing crime fiction helped that. Mm-hmm. Um, but in other ways, maybe not. Yeah, you know, because you're just you're back into you're it. just still immersed in it, and mm. you do really need to be. Yes. You know? um, yeah. And uh, yeah, mm. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. But this is a beautiful area, absolutely mm-hmm. beautiful area. Lovely community. Yes. Very supportive. Yes. You know, um, couldn't have found a better place. area to live in, bring mm-hmm. family up in. Yeah. You know, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I moved down here from Glasgow um, mm-hmm. when I was like, well, 11, something like that. And the, I found a difference on adjustment as well. You know, silly little things like not knowing how to sleep without street light and things like that. Yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. The, and the quietness. Of yes. Like not, not hearing the hum. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, when we first moved here, it was uh, we were renting a, uh, a cottage on the edge of a farm. And I can remember the first morning opening the curtains and there was cows just like chewing grass over the dike wall looking mm. in and mm. I can just remember shutting the curtains thinking it's like I've been placed in a safe house in the middle of nowhere <laughs> I had that feeling uh-huh. and you know because yeah. it was totally alien yes you know yeah. when you're used to kind of the sound of sirens mm. voices yeah. constantly yes yeah. you know it becomes that becomes your norm mm. so complete 
quiet. Yes, it's quiet. You know, we can just hear that. You can hear the the, the 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 trees and the wind, the birds. You know, cattle brain. Yeah. It, it, it's like what's going on. Your brain is yeah. struggles with it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're, you're listening out for the extra noises that aren't there. That aren't there. That aren't there. That can almost, but when, but when you end up hearing them, mm-hmm. uh, be quite comforting, mm-hmm. bizarrely. Yes. You know, the sound of a siren is like, oh, okay. Mm. You know? <laughs> but it's not healthy. That's the no, thing. It's yeah, not a healthy yeah, no, no, no. But um, it is, but that's what you just, yeah. you've grown up with it. That's yeah, what you need so, to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously when you, when, when you have to, to work with them as well, you can even just to, to the sound of sirens anyway. Yeah, and I mean, initially when I was in the uniform, obviously, you know, uh, that's what it was all about. But then when I went into detective duty and mm. became a DS, there's less of that. Yeah. Um, certainly the work I was in. Yeah. Um, so, you're but you're still hearing it all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. you're, st- it's still, you're still hearing it all the time. You're seeing the lights, whether you're in the car or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I suppose, yes, once you're a detective, you're turning up a bit later at things, I suppose, than, than the yeah. Group. The initial yeah. response. Yeah, yeah, you're you're um exactly. So you get yeah the initial responders, and mm-hmm. then you'll be allocated the crime if there's if it's for a detective to deal yeah. with. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, certainly murder and stuff like that. Yeah, you're kind of yeah. following up after mm-hmm. the initial people have yeah. discovered it or been called to it. Really. Yeah. Mm. Uh, there, there was one moment I think in when how do I beat um when the main character the the informant. I'm terrible with ben. names. Ben, yeah. yes. Um, he went into someone's house and it was but well, but it felt really real. Yeah. Um, and I actually I remember thinking to myself, did he see this? Is this something that you had, you know? Well, you know, with the ch- m- more than likely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more than likely. Yes. But uh, it wouldn't necessarily be that I was describing a specific mm-hmm. house. But just that kind but of thing. Obviously, you know. When you've been into many, yeah, uh, like I described in the book, mm. then your 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 brain can go back to the sense of smell, touch, mm. yes. uh, you know, yeah. uh, and describe it mm-hmm. without having to. Um, it's drawing from very various parts of reality, but fictionalizing yes. the setting. Yes. Because the whole thing is fiction. Yeah. But obviously, you're drawing from experience yeah. about how these things would present. Mm, yeah. yeah, which is only natural. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was—it was just one of those sort of really striking moments. I remember reading it and just thinking, mm, yeah, mm, that's that's a bit, yeah, a bit full on, quite scary. And so that yeah. book, so that book still, um, that's st- still on Amazon under Ian Patrick. How do I beat? Oh, I completely recommend it. Yes, it's a very good. Book. So uh, I think if you wanted to start anywhere with my writing, it would be a good. Book. It'd be a good because it's a standalone mm-hmm. as well. Yes. So, yeah. you know, and um, the Nash Moretti series with the book folks, they're all available on Amazon. And there's a box set out now on Kindle mm-hmm. where you can get all three for 99p. Oh, wow. So, yeah. you know, now's a good time now's to a good time. Of, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's just been Black Friday and things like that. Just, Absolutely, yeah. 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 Um, right, so or your library. This is a thing as well. Your local library. Your local this library. The, yeah, there you go. You know, Although you can, I don't have How the Wired Week here, I have it at Castle Books. There you go. I mean, that, that is also vitally important. Um, don't necessarily buy the things. Come in mm-hmm. here and, and, and uh, take them out. Because the more libraries get used, the yep. more they're going to remain. And I'd rather that. Mm-hmm. I'd rather people come here and, and loan my books and bring them back. Mm-hmm. Than, and places like this continue to exist. They're vital community hubs. This library here, um, I remember as a teenager coming in here. Um, to get books out and the thing about going into a library and finding an offer um, I mean it gives you the opportunity you take the book out you don't have to pay for it obviously and you can get into them and it was Anne Rice I found them oh. yeah and it was, it was it was Interview with the Vampire and after that I read and bought all of her books mm-hmm. because of that initial library experience you know, and yeah. you, know you, you can read it you can enjoy it and you can think oh, I could do some more of that and yeah, and 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 it's and you know the author is still benefiting mm-hmm. from it because of pub, public lending rights. Yeah. So it's not that um, it, you know, it, it's not that the author doesn't benefit mm-hmm. in the same way. But the the main thing is that you know hubs like this continue to get used. Mm-hmm. And, oh, um, I mean, yes, 
we do so many things, different things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the period toddler group. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah. But, um, the whole service has evolved really, hasn't it? It has, and it has had to evolve. Mm. You know, there's been a lot of challenges, and it looks like there might be some more challenges coming our way, sort of thing, you know. Um, that was actually another thing that I, I, I actually quite appreciated was the way you, um, in the, the, the back of novels, you quite often tackled the, the, the austerity and the yeah. way that that was affecting yeah. policing. I thought that was a, a, a really interesting angle. Yeah, because, you know, my last 10 years service was during uh, massive cuts. Yeah. Massive cuts. And um, not that I saw corruption, because mm-hmm. obviously if I saw corruption, I don't with it. Yeah. But, if, um, but you could see how it could happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, and you could see how it would happen. It Absolutely. Was, yeah. it, was, it was kind of... Um, and now it's still continuing. The mm-hmm. austerity is still continuing. Mm-hmm. Cuts to public services... You know, uh, uh, is is just atrocious. Mm. So, like, um, yeah, that was a big thing about those books. Mm. The austerity angle. Yes. Is yes. um, and it wasn't to justify the, the protagonist's behaviour. No. It was almost to say, how can you police it when there's when there's no one to police it yes. internally? Yes. People will get away with it. Yes. When they shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. You know, and obviously you have anti-corruption units, you have all those kind of things, but um, they're facing cuts too. They, they could be getting cut. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, yeah. 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 No, no, I, I, I appreciated that. I mean, obviously, um, anybody working in public services has felt the, the sort of yeah. the cold hand of austerity. Um, yes. And uh, and yeah, sorry to interrupt. No, when you fine. look in, but when you go back to lockdown, mm-hmm. okay, you go back to you know um, the core of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know. Because of the of public sector workers, the country kept going. Mm-hmm. And I'm not just talking about the police. Mm-hmm. I'm not just talking about just talking about the police and nurses. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, refuse collectors. Yeah. You know, people going in doing shop work. Yeah. You know, uh, postal workers. Mm-hmm. All that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Almost having no choice. Mm-hmm. You know, like they, have, they they couldn't just stay at home. Yeah. Like I I could. Mm-hmm. So you have to be very 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 thankful of that service. Like, um, and because we would miss it massively if it went any more. Mm-hmm. We're already seeing the, 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 the knock on effect. Yes, I know. Um, so it's not asking a lot. Nurses asking for pay rises is not asking a lot. No. Um, uh, police officers asking for pay rises mm-hmm. is not asking a lot. Yes. It's, it's trying to protect vital services, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it is about. Ultimately, it's actually about the protection of society. Um, yes, it is. Being able to being able to pay the people who do the protection properly for what they do, and being able to give them the resources to do their job properly, ultimately protects society. So when you keep cutting these things, society yep. becomes a lot more dangerous. That's right, and you only see a very small amount on social media in the news. Mm. It's only whatever's going to grab attention. Mm-hmm. You don't see all the other good work that's going on mm. in the background, or some of the crimes that are being prevented by. You know, because if you learned about all of that, mm-hmm. you, you know, you, you might want to go out your front door. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be, it's, um, there, there is a lot of great work going on. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, it, it, and as often happens with that kind of work, it's very behind the scenes and you don't yes, really see it. No, you don't. No, you don't. And you don't appreciate the toll, especially in the NHS, especially yes. in the police, fire. You know, yes. um, and just social services, but just frontline public sector mm-hmm. workers, and I include that across the board, not ne- not necessarily civil servants, mm-hmm. but across the board, people that you know are there doing a job that help us. Mm-hmm. Yes. With. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was a main. That was a big thing in that book. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, that that series I, I, definitely it touched me. It, yeah, yes. and I feel very strongly about it. Mm-hmm. I hate the injustice of it. No, I don't like right. injustice. I can I trigger it. <laughs> you know, it's just terrible. It does trigger something in me. Yes. Like, uh, it's probably why I went into the police. Yeah, I was going to say, just exactly that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so you could sort of tackle the injustice. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, we try. Try. You know, do your best to do it. That's it. You know, yeah, do your best to do it. In, in the face of it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's not an easy job. It's not an easy job at all. No. No, yeah. it's not an easy job. <laughs> and, um, uh, it's not an easy job and there's less and less people doing it. Mm. Less and less people to back you up. Yes. 
you know, like even rural policing, mm -hmm. then you might have single crewed cars going out. Yes. You know, they don't know what they're going to face. I know. And, yes. you, and, you, and there's no, you can't just say, yeah, but it's a quiet rural area, it's this and that. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. well, you don't know what you're going to be stepping into from yeah, one day to the next. That simple call mm -hmm. uh, could end up not being so simple yes. by the time you get there and step mm -hmm. through that door. You don't know what's going to be on the other mm -hmm. side. And that is constant. You know, um, so it, it builds up for that part. Mm, mm. You know, and mm. so they do. It, it is. They do need our support. Mm. Yes. Um. What was I going to say? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I was actually going to ask another question. So to go off subject yeah. a little bit. So, um, I've, I've I've interviewed a number of people, and I always like to ask people about your actual sitting down writing process. Okay. So how 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 do you go about writing of a day? How'd you get yourself sat, sat down? Well, I don't write every day, mm -hmm. okay? Because, you know, life takes over. That's fair enough. Um, I'd like, you know, I've, uh, so, but I'm always thinking about writing. Mm. So there is a difference. So yes. in some ways I am writing every day because mm -hmm. I'm thinking about it. Yes. So I'm thinking about what stage my stories are at, mm -hmm. where I could add to them. I might, might make a phone note. Yeah. You know, so it's not that I'm not doing it uh -huh. it's not that I'm completely switched off from it it's always there yes so but I've learned to satisfy that part of my brain mm -hmm. where I don't need to sit down in the chair but when I do sit down in the chair I know where I'm going to pick it up from mm -hmm. Hemingway had a, um, <coughs> a system uh, and I call them Hemingway points so mm -hmm. wherever he, he knew when he wherever he stopped writing mm -hmm. he could pick it up the next day mm -hmm. now that could have been because he was drunk off his head and whatever he was on uh, and, he had, and he had to do it uh -huh. so that when he came back to there he'd be going oh okay I, I kind of remember where I'm at I can mm -hmm. carry on yeah. I might be doing a disservice to him but that's, yes. I must have read it somewhere for me mm -hmm. to remember that yes. whether it's true or not I don't know mm -hmm. you know it might not be check it out mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> that, so, but I use those points so I get mm -hmm. to a point in the, in the story and if it still feels quite fresh I stop mm -hmm. I don't carry on writing so I stop that not knowing where I'm going to go right. so I never have mm -hmm. uh, blank days Yes. Of where I don't know, I don't know what to call it. Uh, writer's block. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't get writer's block so much as I just don't find time. I, as soon as I sit down in front of in front of the screen, I get and I get sucked in. I can I can do you know, a thousand words in the bus quite happily. It's that getting sat down in front of the screen and, and yeah. switching the brain off enough from day to day life to story life. Yeah, and I think that's the same for a lot of people. I think, mm -hmm. you know, that, that can stop the whole process. Mm -hmm. But in the end, if you actually look at your day mm -hmm. and you look at certain chunks of time in that day yeah. that you could use, but mm -hmm. you're not prioritising it, yeah. that's what you've got to do. Yeah. So, for example, if you, if, you, um, if you stop your phone on saying how many times you pick it up, mm -hmm. you might be shocked at how much time that oh, is allowing. Yes. So let's say it's an hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I'm you've, feeling this. You've, you've accumulated an hour. Oh. That could be an hour's writing. Mm. I don't watch television. Mm. Then I don't so watch it uh, I'll use that time to write. Mm. I love music. I'll listen to music. Mm -hmm. And there's not a day goes by I don't listen to music. Absolutely. And music influences a lot of my writing. Yeah. So um, I might listen to some music and write. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you find it affects pacing when you're listening to music? Do you know what well, I mean? Yeah. Sometimes make, make so, its way into your writing that way yes so um normally i'll have a playlist for each book ah. so i'll listen to that mm -hmm. so if i'm going to write a chase scene for yes. example i'll get some driving pumping music in mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and it will it will almost be saying to my brain you're there this is the energy you've got mm -hmm. to give that passage mm -hmm. but equally if i need to calm things down then i'll choose something ambient something yes. entirely different ah. so i can just slow it yes no, um, not that stuff. That makes sense. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I, I. So some people need silence to write. Some, I mean, but I think again, having been in the police, mm -hmm. you know, you're writing reports and everything mm -hmm. sometimes in chaotic environments. Yes. You know, like uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's noise, there's everything going uh -huh. on. Yeah, no. Um, so I was a custody officer for a year mm -hmm. when I so I, I was a DC, but there was something called. Rotation, detective rotation. Mm -hmm. They wanted more detectives out in uniform mm -hmm. before they could get promoted. 
So there was no DS vacancies at the time. So I came out of the child murder team as an as a, uh, acting DS to then go into uniform mm -hmm. as a PS, peace yes. sergeant. Uh -huh. So uh, that was quite a baptism of fire because I hadn't been on the streets for a number of years. Yes. So a lot of change. Yes. So anyway, I ended up in custody, but I was mm -hmm. quite happy. Mm -hmm. and that was where my knowledge of law and everything was mm -hmm. processing prisons. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're writing stuff up there all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you've got 26 cells to manage. Yes. You know, so you can't sit in silence. No. And there could be sure people some... smashing cell walls. There could be yes. all kinds of noise going on. Uh -huh. People talking, you're mm -hmm. getting interrupted all the time. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> I think from that, it naturally evolved that I could write anywhere. That's, that, that, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, because then that means that if you, I don't know, if you find yourself stuck it stuck in town for a day or something like that and you've got to kind of kick about at least yeah. if you've got a notebook you can you've got a notebook you take your phone you can take mm. your laptop yeah take, take take whatever you're using to write mm. with you all the time yes you will find time to write you know you, you're waiting to pick your kids up from school mm -hmm. write a bit in that time mm. yes just i mean my main tip is don't look at your phone don't, <laughs> yeah, i can't say anymore no don't that's look at your phone. That's and if you, and for example, if you can and you're able to, mm -hmm. turn, you know, like, you, you probably have to have the internet on to save your work. Yes. I appreciate that. Yeah. If you're not doing research, uh -huh. go offline and write. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can either back it up to your computer, back it up to a disc, mm -hmm. uh, a USB, and, mm -hmm. or, and then upload it, turn mm -hmm. on the Wi Fi when you're ready to save it to the cloud. Mm -hmm. But don't, you know, because yeah. otherwise you get notifications coming in all over the place. Yeah. You're getting drawn to social media, you're yeah. getting drawn, you know, and then you're just down a wormhole and your time is then gone. Yes. You've got to time block. Yes. And be strict about it. Mm. To yourself. Yes. Like, this is my time, this is when I'm going to write. Yes. And of course, the more words you're putting on a page, mm -hmm. the more your work's progressing to the mm -hmm. point where you're going to finish it. Yes. You know? Yeah, that's And you, you've got, you've, once you've got a finished first draft, you're well on your way to getting mm -hmm. that book done. Yes. Because then you're working on that. You're not having to think about yeah. the whole story. Yes. You've got, you've, got, you've got the basics down. Yeah, you have. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's all about just sort of adding the flourishes. And, yeah, it is. And, and getting rid of the rubbish. Yeah. And <laughs> I, so I don't tend to think about getting to the end of the book either. Mm -hmm. I just think of it in, in yeah. small, you know, like yes. how, do you, how do you eat an elephant in small bites? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, you kind of yeah. just chunking away the work. Mm -hmm. Well, I've done mm -hmm. a thousand words today. Yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. And, and I never edit as I'm going along. Uh, uh, that's, that's very good. Um, yeah. that, 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 that's always a temptation. Yeah, because you're going to get bogged down. Mm. Just get that first draft down and then edit it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, just get the words down on paper, yeah. get the thing flowing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some people do prefer to plan it. Mm -hmm. they might, you, you might prefer to outline a novel mm -hmm. so you kind of know where you're going in different yeah. stages. Yeah. Um, I would recommend, uh, the, so Joseph Campbell mm -hmm. um, explored the hero's journey. Mm. So I definitely recommend reading that book. Yes. Um, because that's drawing on myth, legend, mm. Mm. and how we've evolved with stories throughout our entire life. Yes. It's probably in our DNA. Yes. You know, so, um, and then Christopher Vogler did a chart of the character arc and the mm -hmm. character's journey, mm -hmm. which splits it up into three acts. Mm -hmm. So that can be helpful mm -hmm. to structure your, your yes. characters, uh -huh. but not necessarily structure the story. So you can see where if you're hitting those points mm -hmm. at the right time, you're yes. probably flowing in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But do that in the edit. Yes. Like don't just get, just get your story down. Um, yeah. yeah. So when you're writing, you're really, you're very character driven and plot kind of, not, I'm not saying secondary, but that's what happens to the characters then. Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. Character driven stories are the best. Mm. Yes. You know, yeah. they, they really are. I mean, yes. um, so for example, Anthony Horowitz Hawthorne mm -hmm. character detective. Mm -hmm. oh, just brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, because that is a great examples of character driven storylines. Because mm -hmm. that detective in there is he, he's laugh out loud. He's an mm. absolute gem. Mm. He's clearly spoken to mm -hmm. a proper detective. Yes. Like because that character, mm -hmm. you could I could imagine working with someone like that. Right. You yeah. know. Yeah. Just absolutely. Um, 
who is the other guy, Joseph Knox, mm. who has, um, I think it was Sirens, I think it was one of his books. Mm. Um, he's got a couple of characters in there, a DI and a DC. Very, very believable. Yes. I can absolutely imagine working with them. Yeah. But again, character driven storylines. Yes, yes. Nice. Uh, and um, so Batford, that's character driven. Absolutely. Yes, um, that's that, that's the thing. You know, you're you're, you're, yeah. you're you're stepping into his world. He might be doing he might be doing something. He might he might have a particular mission he's on. But the yeah. point of it is, you're actually stepping into his world. And that's right. Yeah. Seeing how things work his way. Yeah, Nash and Moretti the same there. Mm-hmm. You know, they you are although there's murders going on, they're leading it. Yeah. They're they're running it. And yes. So you're having to step into their world. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely. Uh, Character driven. I know. Uh, going back to Paul McCarthy again, mm-hmm. his book *The Road*. He, uh, mm-hmm. I know. I, I, I mean, the man is an incredible writer. Yes. But he was often asked, "What happened? What was the event?" Mm-hmm. Right. And his answer to that was, "It doesn't matter what the apocalyptic event was. Yes. It's what are they going to do now?" Yes. And again. It's, it's a father and a son mm-hmm. on the road. Mm-hmm. Character driven. I mean, it's a, a phenomenal book. Oh, it is. It's 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 it's, um, it's a harrowing book. Oh, and it is. Yeah. There's, there's there's moments in it where you're just um, you're not in here. You, you spend. I spent an awful lot of time being really afraid for the boy <laughs> because yeah. it was because it was such a hostile environment for a child to be in, and of course his father was sick. As well, so you yep. know, the, pers- the person he had to depend on yeah. was 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 possibly going to be un- un- undependable because he was, yes. you know, and, and that was that was kind of it was very frightening, but, but it all that really compelling, very compelling, and all that time, mm-hmm. it's those two on a on a road on mm-hmm. foot, yes, that's it. Yes. But when you're reading it, and I always remember, and he was very very cleverly did it. Mm-hmm. They f- they there was a point in the story and. You know, uh, it's going to ruin it for you. So pause it now if you don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, right? totally. You have enough time. Yeah. So uh, where they go into like a bunker. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know about you, but I read that and there's instant relief. It's like, oh my god, they're safe. Yes. But of course, then they're going to have to leave it. Uh-huh. You know, so cleverly done. Mm-hmm. So yes. cleverly yes. done. And of course, you know, when you talk about grammar and you talk about things like that in books, he he doesn't use speech marks. No, no. no um, I think commas even are pretty scary. Yes, it's but quite... the story flows. You mm-hmm. can read it. Yes. You know, that's off putting to some people, but actually, I felt I could read the book. Mm. You know, um, and that's the way he writes. Mm. But that is Cormac McCarthy. Right? Yes. You yes. can get away with that. I yes. would not recommend a new writer to just go and try doing to that. not put speech marks in or correct grammar and then mm. submit it. You yes. have to be. But it's very, very nice. It's interesting the sort of cultural yeah. differences with that. Um, going back to um, the commitment, um, I remember you know, opening up and starting to read it and going, the speech marks, it's a dash. And, you know, those sort of little things like that yeah. were, were different yeah. because, you know, they, I'm guessing it's because it's Irish fiction, so that's a, a different convention for that. But it's quite interesting to see that sort of, who else has done a lot of sort of like messing around? Did you ever read um, Fearsome Engine by Ian Banks? No. Right, that's what well, Fearsome Engine is actually called. It's really interesting because it's a first person perspective and the main character is narrating, but the main character's speech is unusual. Mm-hmm. So it, it's all written kind of verbatim. Yeah. And um, it's done really well. It's amazing how quickly you just drop into it, even though. It's kind of muck, mucking around with how style, sh- you know, how reading style should be. Yeah. Um, you know, the spelling's all over the place and things like that. Um, yeah. I think it's actually spelled. The name of it is spelled F E E R S U M E N D G I N. So you know, and it's actually supposed to be fearsome engine. Yeah. But yeah, and that's that. That's that's how you know. That's yeah. How it goes through it, and it's really interesting to see when a writer does sort of take the convention. And then give it a twist. And yeah, I mean, things. look, if you if, if you can do that, <clears throat> do it. Yes. If right. that's gonna if if not doing it is gonna mm. prevent you from writing what could be a superb book, mm. then just get on with it. Write it however you can write. Yes. Like, that's the thing to do. 
That's it. Because um, who says that I'm right? I don't know. Do I? Well, I, I don't. Think, I think that's the interesting thing about writing. There isn't actually one way to do it. And there's not any, there's not even one way to respond to a book either. As, no, as it's totally reader, subjective. So, and, and you know, and of course, it is a business. Mm-hmm. You know, writing is a business. Mm-hmm. In the end, of the, if you well, certainly, if you want to be a published author, mm-hmm. you know, you have to accept that the, the publishing industry is an industry, mm-hmm. is a business. Yeah. So it has to be commercially viable to yep. sell. Yes. Right? It could be the best writing, lovely, beautiful, mm-hmm. well written, mm-hmm. but if they can't sell it, they're not going to take it. Oh, no, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But of course, you have the advent of self-publishing now, mm-hmm. which I did with How the Wild Wheat, mm-hmm. which means that you are in total control. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, um, same with music. It's like, uh, I don't necessarily believe that that, that, that gatekeepers are the best thing. Mm-hmm. Because, you, you you know, there's some... Um, when I was writing Driftwood, there was a, I discovered a band called the 1004s, the Scottish band. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal music. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, from that, uh, Where There Be Fireworks, mm-hmm. that's another great band. All on Spotify. Yeah. Um, Kirsten Adamson. Mm-hmm. Again, fantastic singer. Yeah. But if it wasn't for those platforms, mm-hmm. would I hear? Would I have heard them? Probably not. No. So it's the same with writing. You know, you got. Mm-hmm. I know people poo poo Amazon and all the rest of it and uh, these, these these platforms, but it's a way of getting your work in front of an audience. Yes. That rather than have someone say, you know, uh, no, your stuff isn't worthy of publishing, mm-hmm. which is not true. Mm-hmm. It just it's just their opinion. Yes. So, uh-huh. like, um, have faith and confidence in your work. Mm. But, how, you know, having said that, obviously, How the Wide Wheat went through exactly the same process mm-hmm. a publisher would have to do. Yes. So it was professionally edited, mm-hmm. the cover art done, mm-hmm. you know, set up, yes. formatting, the yes. loss. Yeah. So what the product you're getting is a professional product. Mm-hmm. Even you know, don't, yeah. don't do a first draft and upload it to Amazon. You, you're going to yeah. do yourself a disservice. I'm the reader. Yes, absolutely. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Um, I think, well, you, you kind of get into a wee bubble with your story, and I suppose that's one of the reasons why you desperately, need, not everybody desperately needs somebody else to look at it. Is, yeah, it is. You, you, you do. You've got, you're in a bubble, and simple things, um, like, you know, you could totally miss out words that you'll read when you read it back to yourself. If you know what that's I mean? Sense. Silly little yeah. things like that. From that through to, you know, leaving out plot points or, or, or just leaving a character hanging or things like that that you might not have noticed. Yeah, because you're so, because yeah. you know, you know, you're so immersed mm-hmm. in the work. And working with uh, Sarah on, the, on one of my books, one thing she would say is, well, you know, she said, well, what happens here? And I'd tell her, and she's all like, yeah, let the reader know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know, but yeah. let the reader know. This is the time you need to let the reader know. Not let, have them try and work something out that mm-hmm. they need to. Yes. So editors are vital. Mm. Yes, they, they help you, you know, step I know there are internet editing tools. Yes. And by all means, use them for things like grammar mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yes. But then you need an editor to look at structure, mm-hmm. the line edits, those kind of things. And continuity. Need, and the continuity. And all those kind of things. That you need um, that human element involved. Mm. Yes. Um, That's it. Well, I, I've, it certainly worked for me. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Um, well, yeah, I think we should wrap been, up. Yeah, I know, that's a lovely chat. We've been chatting, chatting for a while, so yeah. that's, that's pretty no, good. It's been we both, chat, hopefully yeah. haven't run out of speech. So. No, uh, thank you for the invite. And, <laughs> oh, uh, well, not yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks so for reading my really, stuff. Yeah, oh, I've, I've really liked your books. They're really good. Okay. <laughs> and I recommend them. Thank you. Wholeheartedly. And thank you to everyone who's listening. Anyone who's listening. Very appreciated.